Hello, beautiful. Hey, today is going to be a podcast of sorts because there will be no video, but you can hear me and I'm going to talk you through something really important today. And it is the sin of pride. God hates pride. Pride is the opposite of humility. It's when we try to take God's job. You've done it before. I know you have, and I have. We try to do things our own way. Pride steps in when we don't fully rely on God's strength every moment of every day. What's funny about this is that pride is sheer nonsense, really. I mean, really it is. Because if you think about your life, we can do nothing without God. Every breath we take, every talent we possess, and every success we achieve is a gift from Him. We are entirely dependent on His grace and strength to navigate our daily lives. We have to recognize this truth, ladies. We have to recognize this truth, especially when pride tempts us to believe in our self-sufficiency. It's essential to remind ourselves daily, or even hourly if needed, that our abilities and achievements are not our own making. By humbling ourselves and acknowledging God's sovereignty, we honor him and keep pride in check. We allow his guidance to lead us in all we do. As Jesus said, in John fifteen five, I am the vine, you are the branches. Now listen to this part. The one who remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. We can do nothing without him. So why do we think we can do everything without him? Why do we think that? We do. I mean, think about some things going on in your life. There are things going on in your life that that you probably aren't including him or leaning on him. We all do it. If, you have, if you're not doing it now, you've done it before, or you might in the future. Sin of pride is more common than we realize, and we really need to get it under control. So I want to give you some practical steps for overcoming the sin of pride. The first one is acknowledge and confess it. You have to acknowledge your pride. And that's what I hope you're going to be doing listening to this today. Take time to stop and examine your thoughts and actions and identify where pride may be present. This is so important. Once you've identified that, then I want you to confess it. Confess your pride to God in prayer. Ask for his forgiveness and help in overcoming it. Listen to me. God wants to hear your confession. He wants to heal you and help you and lead you. Don't ever let so much guilt sink in that you forget to rely on him and his need to cleanse you. And that comes from confession. Another practical step for overcoming the sin of pride is seeking humility through service. When we focus our eyes on others and no longer on ourselves, we are honoring God and we're humbling ourselves before him. It helps shift the focus from ourselves to others, which is hugely important because suddenly our problems aren't as important. Theirs are, right? We're focusing on them and showing Christ in us to them. Another way to seek humility through service is uh, gratitude. And this would be telling others that you're grateful for them or thankful for them or or that they are a blessing in your life. You have to recognize that all good things come from God. And so a way that you can do that is seek humility through service. A third practical step for overcoming the sin of pride is depend on God. Daily prayer. This is so important. Start each day with a prayer asking for God's guidance and strength, acknowledging your dependence on him. How many of you do that? I don't do that every day. I have ADHD and it's very hard for me to be consistent in anything. And that's important. That's important. So I need to work on that. Study scripture. Regularly read and meditate on scriptures that emphasize humility and dependence on God. We have to be in the word. We have to be in prayer. We have to be serving others. And we have to keep our own heart in check with confession. Let me read you some scriptures about humility and pride. James 4, 6. James is Jesus's half-brother, okay? He did not 
begin to be a Christ follower until after Jesus um, died. All right. So this is James. He says about God, but he gives us more grace. This is why God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So this word more in this verse is magas. It's large, great in the widest sense, or abundance. That's the Greek word for more. That's what it means. In abundance. Large as in the widest sense. I also wrote down the amplified translation of that verse. And it says, but he gives us more and more grace through the power of the Holy Spirit to defy sin and live an obedient life that reflects both our faith and our gratitude for our salvation. How beautiful is that? How beautiful is that? The next one says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or empty pride, but in humility, consider those, consider others more important than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. So that's Philippians 2, 3, and 4. And that just reminded me to keep my focus on others. Keep my focus on God first, my focus on others second, and I am last. It's important that we take care of ourselves, but our focus needs to be on others. Another scripture is 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7. It says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, so that in due time he may exalt you. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. So this word humble at the beginning of 1 Peter is tapinio in Greek, and it means to bring low, to be fully dependent on the Lord. So we're supposed to bring ourselves down and ex exalt God. And it says that he will exalt us. So we don't need to exalt ourselves because God is going to do this for us when we humble ourselves to him. Another scripture is Romans 12, 3. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but think of yourself with sober judgment according to the measure of faith God has given you. That's Romans 12, 3. So the New Living Translation says that a bit differently. It says, because of the privilege and authority God has given me, so we do this because of the privilege and authority that God has given us. In Romans 12, 3, it said, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. And that means that we need to be honest in our evaluation of ourself. We need to be honest in our evaluation of ourself. Proverbs 16, 18 says, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. This word destruction in the Hebrew language means crushing a fracture or a breach. So pride is what happens before we are crushed, fractured, or breached. Have you been broken down recently? Have your emotions been too much? Has your physical health been too much? Has your family been too much? Perhaps pride has led up to that. So we have to get this under control. Isaiah 66, 2 says, God says, has not my hand made all these things? And so they came into being, declares the Lord. This is the one I esteem. He who is humble and contrite in spirit, who trembles at my word. So God is the creator of all. He's the creator of all. And he wants us to be humble and contrite in spirit. He wants us to tremble at his word. And tremble or fear or reverence is not to be afraid. It's to be so amazed and in awe of his goodness that you are stunned, really. You're trembling at his word. The book of Micah tells us in 6, 8, he has shown you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you, require of you, but to act justly, to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. So we have to do these things with him. Let me say that again. He wants us to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. It has to be with our God. Matthew 23, 12 says, For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. This tells me that God must do the humbling. 
okay? It's God's job. We have to confess it to him and depend on him, but he will humble us. He will help us not let pride control us. The last scripture that I have here for you today is Psalm 147, 6. The Lord sustains the humble, but casts the wicked to the ground. And the word sustains here means he restores and relieves. How many of you need sustained today? How many of you need restoration and relief from what you're going through? The Lord will do that for you if you are humble. He wants you to come before him, wipe away your pride, depend solely on him for every breath we take, every talent we possess, and every success we achieve is a gift from him. If you are interested in going through the spiritual growth process with me, visit my Patreon, patreon.com backslash garden of grace. We are only on step one this week and it has been just life changing for me super eye-opening about what sins I have that I didn't even realize that I needed to work on. So I hope you will come and join us over there so that you can go through this process too. Have a blessed day.